we're going to use the trapezoidal rule to compute the approximate value. I'm not going to compute the exact value here. Uh, we did that earlier. I'm just going to compute the approximate value. And then the difference of these two, the difference of the exact and the approximate value we're going to compute is going to be the error. Um, it's going to be the absolute value of that. So make sure if you subtract them in one order, uh, you get negative. It's just going to be the positive uh, difference. So we have our x squared function. Let's write down. So f of x is x squared. We have our a and our b. a is the little x value, which is 5. b is 9. Now we need a few different, let's see, a few different things. We'll get the uh, delta x first. And that's b minus a over n. So we better write down what n is. n is the number of uh, subdivisions or the number of trapezoids. So there's four trapezoids. So we can compute delta x. It's 9 minus 5 over 4. 4 over 4. I got lucky here and got 1. Um, you may not get 1. Maybe you get uh, you know, 4 fifths or something like that. Uh, don't worry. Just keep going with whatever value you get for delta x. Just make sure you did b minus a over n. All right, so we're going to look at this rule now. We are going to compute t4, because remember n is 4. So I'm just copying right here. 1 half. I'm going to copy everything here. fx naught plus. 2fx1 plus 2fx2 plus. Now I gotta be careful, we're gonna end right here. fx4. So we have 2fx3. The last one that we write, which is the next one, does not have a 2 in front. The initial one and the final one do not have a 2. Okay, so we're ready to compute this. Uh, we better write down what all these x values are. So x0 is always going to be, uh, it's going to be your initial x value, which is 5. x1 is going to be uh, 5 plus delta x, which is 5 plus 1, and that's 6. Now what's actually happening here, we better write down what's actually happening here. We're going from 5 to 9. We have the x squared function over top of this. This is not what the parabola looks like. If I drew it as steep as it really looks, it'd be super steep and go right off the screen. So I'm going to draw a much more gentle slope on this parabola. Let's say it looks something like that. And when we're computing this, we're using these trapezoids. We're using these two y values. We're taking a straight line across here. And what we're doing is we're computing the area that I just shaded in. We're doing a new trapezoid. Wow. These lines are very much not vertical. That's OK. Let's pretend they are. So we're going to compute this next trapezoid here. And the next trapezoid right here. And the last trapezoid right here. I'm just going to write down the equation for this first trapezoid. Uh, delta x measures how much x changes. So delta x goes from there to there. Our delta x, we broke this into four pieces. Luckily, the distance was also four. So our delta x happens to equal one. Oops. So our delta x was 1. Again, your delta x very likely could have a, a fraction in it. So just be ready for that. So that means the second, so the first x value is 5. The second one is 6. The third one, if I need it, well, when I need it, will be 7. 
then eight, and the last one will be nine. This first one is x is zero. Then there's x1, x2, x3, x4. It's probably better to use this visual representation here for our x values. Okay, that first trapezoid, I'll just call it uh, trap one. How do you get the area? It's the base times uh, you average the heights together. So our base is delta x, and we're adding together half, the height one. Now, this height right here is f of, for us is f of five or f of x zero, that's the first height. The second height right here is f of x1. We're using the x1 x value and we're effing it to get the height and we use f0 to get the, the other height. All right, that's trap one. I'm only gonna do trap two. Same base, we're gonna average uh, now we're using x1 and x2. Those are the two different x values that we're gonna f to get the heights. All right, if you keep going uh, through, what you're gonna see is that there's two times we're using f of x1. If I drew the next trapezoid out, I would be using f of x2 twice and there's one by itself, fx0, and at the very last trapezoid, the very last x value will be used once. And that's exactly what this formula says right here. So we're now ready to put our values in. One half, delta x is one. All right, and we have f of x zero. So I have x0 is written at the bottom there, it's five. And just remember, I don't have this on the screen, but f of x, our function is x squared. So x0 is zero squared plus two times x1, whoa, not zero, it's five, just kidding. Uh, x1 is six, and remember you're effing it, so it's six squared plus two, that is x2, which is seven, squared plus two, x3 is eight, squared plus two, x4 is nine, Oop, and I just made a mistake, there is no two here. The last one does not get doubled, it's just nine squared. Okay, so all your inner ones have that two, two, two. Your outer ones don't get multiplied by two. All right, I'm not gonna compute this. Um, there's only uh, five numbers to add up, so you're just gonna add them together. Don't forget to multiply by these one and the one half. Well, you may not have one again, you may have a different value. This is gonna be your estimate. And just to warn you, they didn't ask for the estimate. You have to compute the exact and then subtract the number that this evaluates into, and that difference is gonna go here.